Well, this is an ugly looking day. I think it's gonna start raining. It looked like it was gonna break up, but now I think it's gonna start raining. I think I better put the top up. Yuck. Moment by moment, the landscape changes. Wow. So dramatic. There's a whale there. There's a couple of whales. You can see the spouts. Here, the motor sailing to windward. It got really dark, and then it started drizzling a bit. Just the first time I've had to do this in the rain. It almost looks like it's trying to break up. Well, I might have to put my radar on. Well, there, I couldn't see deadly squat. Very stormy looking. wind. This is not so I forgot the jib. Let's give me an extra knot or two to windward. There's not enough wind to actually just sail. Against this chop it would just knock me back and I'd be out here forever. All kinds of islands around me again. Reefs, rocks. Kind of getting used to that. zigzag my way between these reefs in order to make use of it, but that's okay. I need the exercise. Ah, it's so wild up here. Thousands of square kilometers of reef. No wonder Clackwit explored before modern navigation came in this would be a graveyard it's like I'm moving towards some nice weather I don't mind admitting it's a little bit anxiety provoking being up on deck when you're out here all by yourself the seas aren't bad or anything like that. You just feel a little vulnerable. There's nobody around if you get into trouble. I'm thinking of my uh, radio. There's something special about that too, though, of course. You're totally self reliant, and you have to be totally self reliant. Your own safety. And Put a double reef in it. That'd be exciting. I'm going to be heading out that way. Esperanza Inlet is down there in the island. Another 10 miles, so we'll continue this way. This pack for maybe half an hour and then head for the east.
do trying to beat up wind just wasn't worth it. I mean, there's maybe 10 knots of wind here. Sometimes it gusts more, maybe to 15. But the chop is just, well, the fetch of this water is like thousands of miles. So the chop is so well established that it just bashes the bow of the boat across and she won't point with a dam in this shit. Even with the engine going and motor sailing, it was like, it was going to take me hours to get where I'm going. Even motoring straight into it, it, you know, the best it can do is two and a half, three knots. He just doesn't like this chop. Well, this is why you don't sail the windward, and when the wind is foul, you stay in port. But I was impatient, and it was only like 20 miles to go. But, oh man, just a waste of fuel, really. So dramatic. my approach to Esperanza Inlet. Looks like we're actually going to get some sunshine today. Well, leaving Esperanza Inlet. Although there is forecast for up to gale force winds by early afternoon, it's almost 10 now and I've got, I'm making two knots. There's maybe Oh, six knots of wind out here, seven knots of wind. But I'm so sick of motoring and the wind is fair, so that's what wind there is I'm using. I'm contemplating putting up the spinnaker, but holy smokes, I don't know if there's even enough wind to keep a spinnaker inflated. And then, oh, what a mess that would make with the rolling. Maybe I should try it anyways. I'm not in a hurry, but holy smokes, I'm doing two knots right now. It's beautiful though. Warm, sunny at last. That's Nootka Island. And I think you could just make out in the horizon here, way up there. That's Brooks Peninsula from the south. Pretty soon it'll slip below the horizon. It's, well, that's kind of an ugly sight. I was kind of concerned that that's what would happen with the rolling and such little wind that it would just kind of flop around out there. But it is giving me headway, doing almost four knots. Um, I don't know where the gale force winds are, but I'm, I'm scared to even say that because, of course, they could freaking well pop up at any time. And so it was, I don't know, I wasn't sure about putting up the spinnaker, but there's just so little wind, my jib wasn't doing anything, and I'd be damned if I'm going to mortar another day when the wind is fair. So I'll just let that thing flap around up there as long as it keeps me moving. And uh, off that point down there is Nootka Sound, and that's where I'm heading. It's going to take a few hours to get there, but at this rate. But hopefully that means I'll arrive there before the gale force winds that are forecast for this afternoon. We'll see how fast I end up going before I have to haul this thing in. Well, the breeze is finally starting to pick up. Got the spinnaker full, and it's staying full. 
flopping around. We're doing about four and a half knots. Making good time. I'm just going to have to keep an eye on this breeze now to make sure, watch the rate that it increases. Right. Now I've decided to put in the spinnaker, not because the wind is so strong, but because the seas are building. I don't like being up on deck when it's going like this, so it's only going to get worse. And it's getting hard to pull it in, too. Ugh. The auto helm has a hard time keeping it on track in this crap. God. I do this for fun. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. McKenna Point. And this is Nootka Sound. I think I'm blowing about 20 knots out here now, so now's a good time to be just about ready to turn in there and drop anchor and call her done for the day. The timing worked out well today. Lighthouse. Look at lighthouse. So this is Friendly Cove. This tiny little cove is where the Spanish and the British signed a deal giving the British this part of North America. Wasn't that nice of them? Of course they didn't uh, ask any of the people that were already here. Surprising, this is a tiny little cove. Those would have been pretty big ships. They just tucked right in here, I guess. Side by side, anchored out, shallow enough. I guess that's the church. Somebody's flying a kite up there. <laughs> <laughs> 